Hey guys, Toby Mathis here from Anderson Business Advisors, and today we're gonna to talk about the advantages of sole proprietors. Now, I tend to look at sole proprietors and know that about anywhere between 60 and 70% of the small businesses are organized that way, and I scratch my head because they leave a lot of money on the table. But there's a reason that there's 60 to 70% of people that are doing them that way, that are opening their businesses. And that's because they are flipping easy to start just by saying I'm in business. So I could literally go outside today, get a tool belt and say I'm in the plumbing business, go out and start soliciting people, you know, and I get my business license, depending on where I live, and in some places you don't even need that, and I could just start running a business and say go ahead to pay it to me. I am my business, because that's what a sole proprietor is. A sole proprietor files all of their taxes on your personal tax return on a Schedule C. So it's really easy. In fact, I don't even have to get a separate tax identification number if it's just me. I don't even have to change my name. It could just be me. I could just decide that I am a business tomorrow. I, could, I, could, I don't even need a separate bank account, technically. Now, all of that stuff sounds really, really good, and it's really easy, but it comes at a cost. Number one, there's really a blurred of line between you and your business. And as a result, the IRS loves to attack sole proprietors. In fact, if I have company A set up as a sole proprietor and company B running as a S corp, company A will be audited 1000% plus more. It's actually in, in 2018, the last year that I have the current data for, it was 1200% greater for a general, you know, for a typical business making about hundred thousand dollars a year, which is really, really ugly. If it's a smaller business, let's say that it's just the Joe Schmo making forty thousand dollars a year, it's still a multiple of more than four hundred percent higher, which is kind of scary. Now, here's the number that freaks me out the worst: is the sole proprietor loses that audit audit more than ninety four percent of the time which means nine, like nine times out of 10, you could actually say that, greater than nine times out of 10, you're gonna owe more tax. And the reason is because there's such a blurred line between the business and the individual. So I tend to go do something else. So I'll almost always create some sort of structure. Even if you want to be taxed as a sole proprietor, I'm gonna create a bright line around somebody. I'm an attorney, that's what I do. I don't wanna leave it to chance. I'm gonna create an LLC or something along those lines, and I'm gonna, I could still treat it as a sole proprietor. I could make it disregarded for tax purposes where you just file the same Schedule C. So like if you are just keen on this idea of being taxed as a sole proprietor because you have been told it's easier, you could still do it that way. But as an attorney, I could never, ever tell you it's a good idea to operate a business in your name and the reason being is really simple because you and your business are one and the same so just as a sole proprietor is easy it's also easy for somebody to sue you for everything that you have personally and follow you around the rest of your life suing you every year and garnishing your wages for the next 50 years it doesn't stop they literally can just keep attacking you until you die or you go bankrupt if the type of debt that is incurred is dischargeable. So it's one of those things that can follow you around. So you never, ever, ever operate legally as just a sole proprietor. You always put some sort of entity around it to make sure that you don't find yourself in a situation where you are ruining the day you decided to do business with somebody X or that you contracted with somebody Y or that you put yourself out there uh, and maybe you did business with somebody else and they ran off with all the money and left you with all the bills. And the next thing you know, you're, it's following you around personally. We would never do that. We're always going to create a line. So let's just look at sole proprietor. Very, very easy. If you want it to be easy tax wise. And again, there's justifications in doing it a little more complex because you make more money, which I'll go over in a second. But let's say you just say, boy, it's so easy. It's just everything's easy, I just don't wanna to have to worry about it, I just wanna put it all on my personal return. Okay, but we're still gonna draw a box around it and isolate the liability, okay? We're still gonna do that. Plus, 
we want to have something that doesn't die along with you. If you're disabled or if you pass away, we want to make sure that the business does not die that same day. It can be very, very problematic if that occurs for your family or for anybody behind you or even your customers or anybody else. Is we want to have a nice vehicle that is not you. No offense. Now, the other side to this is sole proprietors, because they're easy, they're also low-lying fruit, and they pay the most in tax. They pay something called a self-employment tax, and they have reduced deductions because if you're the sole proprietor, you technically can't be an employee of your company. Something that we saw recently with the pandemic is that, is that sole proprietors are treated as second-class citizens when it comes to relief, when it comes to banking, when it comes to loans. They weren't even allowed to participate in the first round of the Paycheck Protection Program because nobody knew what to do with them and they didn't give them any of the benefits that were, entitled, were given to other businesses. So it was very problematic for the sole proprietor. Uh, we're still seeing that and it's always played itself out. And that is because if somebody's having difficult, difficulty recognizing the difference between you and your business, what are the chances of them loaning that business money when their fear is going to be that you're just going to take it personally. They're, it's a very valid fear, especially if the money is going into the same account. So they are less likely to do a traditional business loan to that business. What they're probably going to do is give you a loan personally and just let the business, put the business name on it or maybe something called a DBA or something like that along those lines. And it's really just a disguised personal loan. The reason that's bad is now that shows up on your personal uh, credit report and it can reduce your FICO score, which makes credit more expensive for you for things like your home loan or, or anything that your even insurance rates go up. So you want to make sure that you're creating some separation and you also want to take advantage of some tax advantage. One of the things about a sole proprietor is that every dollar you earn is subject to something called a self-employment tax. That is in a part old age, death and survivors or social security and Medicare and it adds up to 15.3%. Now the old age disability and survivors phases out at a, when you get up over about 137,000, it adjusts annually, so you check that out, but it's around 137,000 where it starts to phase out and just go to the Medicare portion, which is 2.9%. Well that 15.3 is a big chunk of money. You could avoid about two thirds of that simply by being an S-corp and it makes life a lot easier, saves you a lot of money, and then you become an employee of the S-Corp, which opens you up to something called an accountable plan, which allows you to save even more money. And I'll just put it in perspective for you. If you are a sole proprietor making about $100,000 and you're an S-Corp making about $100,000, the difference in taxation between those two is gonna be pretty close to 10%. The S-Corporation is going to get to keep about an extra $10,000 a year that you're going to give up because you were lazy and you were a sole proprietor. No, sole proprietor was so much easier, but you left yourself exposed liability wise, and then you made it to where you paid more in tax. Again, the government's not stupid. The government sets up rules and it creates incentives to use a little bit of elbow grease if you're willing to jump through a few hoops. Once you do that, you get lots and lots of benefits, and here is one of them. So sole proprietors are easy, but if you choose to go that route, it will cost you extra money. Now, if you're making $10,000 a year, you may say, eh, maybe it's not worth it. If you're making $100,000 or $200,000 or $300,000 a year, you're crazy to operate as a sole proprietor. I'll be the first one to tell you that in case nobody's ever told you, you're cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. You're nuts. You should not be operating as a sole proprietor. You want to make sure that you're taking advantage of the tax code at that point, and you need to grow up and actually become an S-Corp. You could still be an LLC taxed as an S-Corp if you love LLC. You could be an LLC taxed as a sole proprietor if you're small enough and you just, if you look at it and say, yeah, I'm willing to lose a little bit because I don't want to go through the hassle of actually filing a separate tax return. By the way, the bookkeeping requirements are identical between an S and a sole proprietor, and the tax return that the S corporation files on isn't harder than the Schedule C that's part of your return for your sole proprietorship. So it's actually pretty funny from somebody standing in my, stand, in, in my shoes, I'm looking at it going, wait a second, they're not that much different, but there's a huge difference in both the tax benefit 
the legal separation of the individual from their business, their ability to get access to capital, their ability to get access to loans. By the way, be like, don't even think you're not going to have partners in a sole proprietor. You can't, you can't have investors in a sole proprietor. You just can't. It's it literally, you cannot. So it gets to this weird situation where if you want to grow, you're bearing the burden as a sole proprietor. If you want to grow as a corporation or as uh, an LLC, it's much, much, much easier. Now remember the LLC can choose however it wants to be taxed. So it could be an S corp. It could be a sole proprietor. It could be a C corp, but all of those things have their pluses and minuses. So if I go back to the very beginning of this and say, why do people still operate as sole proprietors? It's because it's a default when you operate as a business and you do nothing. And then because it's so easy, all you have to do is nothing and you become a sole proprietor. That's why so many people are sole proprietors. That, and I'll say there's one last little thing and I'm gonna leave you with this. There's a lot of accountants that tend to be a little lazy and they don't know the difference. So the default is, hey, whatever you become, whatever's easiest. And with the IRS and in world in general, what's easiest is rarely what is best. Thank you.